Welcome to Cues and Views, first on the web for collecting English billiard cues. I keep up to date with all the goings on in auctions and sales transactions that go on throughout the air, well throughout the world to be honest and so I have a very good idea what cues are currently going for. For example the peel cues. Standard Peel Cues 3304 break, WJ Peel, record break made in 1890. These cues are not bringing the prices that they did five years ago at the time of making this video. So really, if I had one of those and I was considering selling it, I wouldn't sell it. Not now, because the price is particularly low. I don't know whether that's because they've been flooding the market recently, because there's quite a lot. I do believe, in actual fact, it's because there were so many made that many people have got them. Many collectors have got very good examples of them and therefore they are seen as not as desirable as they once were. Some years ago you could get £125 for one without raising an eyebrow. It was easy to get that kind of money for one. Now you'll see them change hands for £85 less. So it's interesting that queues sometimes have a high value and sometimes have a low value. This is notwithstanding condition, notwithstanding tip size, notwithstanding length. All the factors that we've already spoken about, about ideal lengths, 58 inches, ideal tip size, a minimum of 10 millimeters, and notwithstanding the woods that have been used to make the queue, because some queues are made with different woods, for the shaft, mainly. Now, does the wood that is used for the shaft affect value. This is a more complicated issue and needs a little bit more conversation. If a cue is made, the shaft is made from pear wood as opposed to ash, which is probably the most common wood used for the shafts in old cues, or maple, then the pear wood version of a cue will almost always be worth more to a collector than an ash version of a certain cue. Having said that, someone once asked me, does the ye old ash cue come in any other wood other than ash? I managed to control myself without smiling and I said no. The reason it's called the ye old ash cue is because it was used, the first ones were made with 50 year old ash from the shipyards in the shaft and this is why they have such a legendary status and fetch such massively outstanding prices at the moment because people know collectors know that these are very desirable cues right now this yield ash cue is one of the top cues in the range of cues produced by Burrs and Watts of London now your cue have a good look at the cue that you have or cues that you are thinking of buying if you are in, in, in any doubt about whether this cue is valuable or not feel free to send me an email. Send me photographs, but you must send, if you can, to get an accurate um, quotation of the current value of that queue, you must give me a clue about length, tip size and condition. Now to do this, I need photographs. I need very good and clear photographs. I once replied to someone's email, he'd sent me pictures of a queue, and I told him that in the condition that the queue was in, I thought it would make a certain price. The gentleman became quite abusive with his reply. This is the best one I've ever seen, he said. What could I say? The queue was not in great condition. The queue that I have that was like it in my own collection, I knew the price that I'd paid. The queue that I had was in mint condition. Quite often, sellers will say in a description, very good condition for its age. I have a queue from 1879, which is and it's dated on the badge, it is almost perfectly mint. So what does good condition for its age actually mean? From my perspective, it means absolutely nothing. Because, as I've said before, I have, for example, I have a Sydney Smith Boris and Watts queue. It is as mint as the day it was made. Perhaps, as I said earlier, it was a second queue owned by a player for many years, never actually used. It is in near original condition.